Here's a quick one minute recap of how we found this turtle skull and prepped it. As you can see there's a little bit of bone sticking out of that rock, that concretion over there. So I started prepping it. The air scribe, many, many hours with the air scribe. Got a large one, a medium one, and a small one that I use over here. Then it's into the vinegar for a few hours and then back to the prepping. You can see the nose is starting to show there in the front. There's the top of the carapace. It's got that real shield shape to it. A bit more of the front being exposed over here. And this, this part was very satisfying. It was flaking away very nicely. It's moving down that side of the skull. Now I'm leaving that last millimeter of rock for the vinegar to remove. So I'm just trying to get as close as possible and then into the vinegar and there's about 20 cycles and here we've got the completed skull. You can see that triangular bite mark on the left hand side of the turtle. Now that we've got the fossil skull prepped, it's ready to be CT scanned. The CT scanners can use x-rays to give us a 3D model of what's going on inside here and can do that by exposing the difference in density between the rock and the bone. And it's better than a traditional x-ray. A traditional x-ray would have just been in one plane, so maybe from the top to the bottom or the front to the back, whereas a CT, as far as I understand it, is going to be rotating around it and taking a whole bunch of x-rays and will give us a 3D image at the end. Here are the fossils ready for scanning. You can see my turtle skull in the front there, then that bird concretion I found recently, and then some other fossils from the museum. And a big thanks to Paul from Canterbury Museum for organizing this. Now we go into the control room where we're safe from the x-rays. And here are the results. It's a little bit tricky to see on the screen over here, but you can see the, the whiter part there is the bone and the speckly grey bit, that's the rock. So we're kind of looking at a cross section, those are the, the nostrils coming through there. And you can see those, those empty parts inside there, that's where the brain would be. It's so amazing that it can see inside that rock. Now that we've got the digital files, we have to tell the computer what is bone and what is rock and we're using this software to do it so you're basically painting the section that is bone to help the the software understand what it should mark as bone and what is rock and it can then remove the rock and give us a, a 3d image to look inside that um, that concretion this is paul showing me how to use the software you can see on the left hand side there that's the crack in the rock. It looks really big on the software, whereas in real life you can barely see it. And the software has now removed the rock and we can look inside the skull here. Still needs some cleanup to be done. It's not showing all the rock in there. But after 15 minutes you can get a really good idea of what bones are in there. And this is that other bone cluster, the one with the bird bones in there. And you can see quite a few bones inside there, way more than I thought. And here's the model all cleaned up. And this was done by Andrew Cuff. Have a look at his YouTube channel. It's, it's really awesome. He does some great prep work as well. It's amazing how much you can see inside here. You can see the palate, uh, there's inside the sinuses, I assume those are sinuses, I'm not sure if turtles have something different, but it's so cool, look at that bite mark. <laughs> uh, that's, this is just incredible that you can see so much detail in here. And of course, now that I've got a 3D model, we're going to have to go 3D print it. Uh, so let's go load it on the 3D printer and see what comes out. 
This is an Ender 3 3D printer. So very much an entry level 3D printer, but you get amazing results from it. I'm using a bone white filament over here. And you can see those little triangles inside there. That's just the infill to give it a bit of extra strength. And then it's got a whole bunch of supports here in front. Here's the original turtle skull over here, full of rock as you can see, and here's the 3D print, exactly the same size, but now we can see all the bones inside. This is the palette over here, you can see there's the, the nostrils, they come through over there, and there's two holes there coming through to the inside over here. I assume <laughs> that this is where the brain would sit, but it's quite weird, it's quite different to us, whereas it's got a bone going down the middle, separating the two halves of the brain, so I'm not too sure how that would work. Someone that knows turtle morphology, <laughs> let us know in the comments. This is where the one ear would sit, and here's the other one. It's amazing. <laughs> And I think that's where the spinal column would join up with the brain or the brain stem. I'm not 100% sure on that. But it's so cool. Look at those eye sockets. <laughs> Andrew did such a great job at creating this 3D model. Please go check out his uh, YouTube page. He does some cool fossil preps and fossil hunts there in the UK. Look how cool that bike mark is over there. It's so defined. <laughs> it's almost this is how I would um, draw <laughs> a bite mark, but it looks so defined. What I think might have happened is it might have gone in like that. This is a, this is a Hastala's shark tooth. It might have gone in like that. So if you imagine it bit down hit there at the front part and then pull back. Yeah, that's just a theory, I'm not sure how it would fit in. Yeah, that shark tooth fits in pretty well. I don't think it went in like that. Though it could have, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> Any bite experts there, let us know in the comments. Well, that's so cool. The next step is to go find all the suture lines. So, if you look very carefully over here, I don't know if it's going to come out on camera, but there's a little bit of a zigzaggy line going down the middle there, and that's where the the different parts that are the different bones that make up the skull uh, are connected together. So I need to draw that in nice and clearly because that can tell us what species it is. This is looking very similar to the Carita or Carita turtle, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but that's the loggerhead turtle. So one of the bigger sea turtles and this one's quite big. It's 18.5 centimeters wide and about 20.5 centimeters long uh, from there to there. So I'm trying to figure out how big the carapace would have been given those measurements. I really feel like we leveled up in this video. We took a rock from the beach, exposed the fossil inside and then went even further and used a CT scanner to show us all the bones inside here. And thanks Paul from the Canary Museum and Leighton from Pacific Radiology for organizing the CT scan. That's so cool. <laughs> Stay safe everyone and I'll see you on the next hunt.